Hi guys, story recaps here, today, I am going to explain, a 2015 German, satirical morbid humor film, called, Look Who's Back. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In the opening of the film, the action takes place in Berlin during World War II. Hitler is accompanied by Koppel, a behavior counselor. Hitler shows his displeasure with the reception to Koppel made by the people. He laments that, while the Nazi salute is out of style, individuals should at the very least lift their hands to their wrists to show respect. Then he goes on to say that he has done everything a human can to demolish the enemy's foundations for desecrating their land. He finds German's existence perplexing, and the fact that he is here himself unsettling. He wakes up on the ground someplace in the woods in the next scene. When he looks up to the sky, he notices that the enemy planes have vanished, and he assumes that they have taken a break. Suddenly, a ball bounces towards him and comes to a halt close to his side. He stands up and walks past the bush towards a structure. Three little children then approach him and inquire whether he is okay. When Hitler sees them, he believes they are the nation's future. He then inquires as to how to get to the roadway. Fabian Sawatsky, a reporter, is shooting the kids on his camera at the time. On the opposite side of the screen, Hitler can be seen. He takes off his army cap and thinks to himself, I think I should go to the Fuhrer bunker. When Hitler walks down the street, he is astounded to see people riding mono-wheel bicycles. He notices others photographing him and remarks that while the rubble has vanished, people have gone insane. Then he feels a modern automobile in his fingers and wonders if he was knocked unconscious and missed the triumph. Then he inquires about the location of Chancellery, but the individual instead requests a photograph. As people approach him and take turns taking photos, he is startled by the camera flashes. He concludes that something went wrong in the place, perplexed by the strange activities taking place around him. As Hitler goes away, he notices a woman on her phone, conversing in German. He approaches her and inquires about the current date, but she becomes afraid and splatters his eyes. Hitler sobs in agony as his eyes turn crimson and his eyesight blurs. He staggers and walks to a neighboring newspaper stand. When he sees the date October 3, 2014, printed on the paper, he is startled and falls to the ground. Mr. Christoph Sensenbrink, the deputy's head, is praised by the chief of a TV station, Kerner. Instead of proposing a better alternative, he names another employee, Miss Katya Bellini, as the managing director. Christoph is surprised and dissatisfied as a result of this. He enters his office and directs his rage at Fabian, a struggling filmmaker. Fabian is sacked and thrown out by the guards despite his best efforts to persuade his employer. After a while, Hitler wakes up at the newsstand and inquires about the date. He affirms that the year is 2014. A perplexed Hitler wonder if the shopkeeper has kidnapped him and suspects that the enemy's secret service is behind it all. If the shopkeeper is working for the enemy, he threatens to kill him, but the shopkeeper instead gives him a bar of chocolate. After many fights, Hitler unlocks it and sniffs it. He declares it to be industrially processed grain, and inquires as to if there is still a bread scarcity. The shopkeeper mistook Hitler for an actor, and asked whether they were filming a documentary nearby. When the shopkeeper claims he looks precisely like the Fuhrer, Hitler responds that he is the Fuhrer. Hitler notices a Turkish newspaper and inquires as to whether the shopkeeper carries Sturmer or Panzerber. According to the merchant, he has more Turkish clientele. The presence of Turkish individuals in Berlin astounds Hitler. He then begins to collect data from the newspaper. He guesses that he didn't win the war in the past, and that Germany was given to clumsy women with the charisma of a wet noodle, while reading it. He also bemoans the existence of Poland, and declares the war to be a complete waste of time. Meanwhile, Fabian sobs as he watches his soccer-related video reporting and laments his firing. His mother comforts him and urges him to pause the camera, which he does, witnessing Hitler standing behind him. Fabian is amused by the discovery of someone who resembles Hitler so closely. The shopkeeper instructs Hitler to put the newspaper aside, and stand outside when he returns to the shop. Hitler resents being forced to work. The merchant advises Hitler to wash his clothing because they are filthy. He then goes to a laundromat, and requests that his uniform be cleaned. Hitler inquires whether they have another uniform, because he is unable to leave nude. Next, we see Hitler wearing trousers and a sweater as he walks to the news vendor. Fabian, has tracked him down and is ready to greet him in the shop. As he marches through modern Germany, Fabian begs Hitler whether he can film him. Hitler is on board with the concept. Fabian borrows money and a car from his mother to embark on a voyage with Hitler. The two find themselves in a hotel, where Hitler is entertained by the television. In Fabian's lecture, 
he then decides to discuss politics. He travels about asking individuals about their political opinions. Following the interviews, he discovers that democracy had only a minor impact on people during his absence. He examines people's dissatisfaction and hidden rage, which reminds him of the 1930s, when people held similar beliefs but didn't have the term, political disenchantment. People inform Hitler about the country's immigrant problem, prompting Hitler to promote his belief that mixing races does not work. Later, Fabian inquires about Hitler's distinctive mustache. Hitler responds that he shaved his mustache to fit a gas mask. After a while, the two find themselves on a farm, where Hitler is bitten by a dog. He becomes upset and fires a shot at the animal. Fabian scolds him and takes the rifle away from him. Fabian finally runs out of money as the tour progresses. But he devises a scheme and persuades passers-by to have their sketches made by Hitler. Hitler does snarky drawings that others find amusing, and he gets paid for it. They resume their journey once they have amassed sufficient funds. Fabian shows Christoph a film of Hitler when they return to town. Because Fabian posted the film on the internet, it gets a lot of views. The enormous amount of views in the video impresses Christoph. He requests Hitler's name and phone number from Fabian. After meeting him, Christoph believes Hitler is insane and requests that Fabian transport him away from the office. Before departing, Hitler goes into the director's office and asks her to help him preserve Germany. Bellini, intrigued by the concept, inquires about the proposal. She swiftly instructs her assistant to develop a suitable television format for broadcasting the Fuhrer's reaction to Hitler's suggestion. Fabian then threatens Christoph with taking Hitler away unless he returns his job. When Christoph learns of this, he hires him as a kitchen boy and promises to advance him when a new editing position becomes available. Hitler is given a table in the TV studio some time later. Christoph requests that Cromier assist Hitler with computer usage. Hitler remembers the computers of his youth and proclaims them to be one of the greatest inventions of all time. When Cromier tries to sign Hitler up for mail, he is told that his name has already been taken. Hitler groans at those who are stealing his name and orders her to use new Reichskanzlei, which he prefers. Hitler will be the star of a live comedy performance called Woe Dude, which Christoph hopes to produce. He's still enraged that Bellini received a promotion instead of him, and he intends to cause her problems. He wants to introduce racism into the debate by making sarcastic remarks about Jews, and he wants Hitler to be thrown out. The show begins, and the host, Witzigman, summons Hitler to the stage. The audience is chatting about Hitler's appearance, but when Hitler looks at them, the room becomes silent. Hitler breaks the stillness soon after, but does not read the lines as written. He explains that he is supposed to make a joke about immigrants, but that he will not. He claims that television is a magnificent human innovation, but the programs that are presented are nonsense. He throws light on issues such as poverty and unemployment, and predicts that the country's citizens are on their way to the abyss without even realizing it. Everyone applauds him for his brilliant idea. The host, Witzigman, is envious of Hitler's popularity. Bellini requests that Christoph broadcast Hitler in every performance. Christoph is depressed as a result of his plan's failure. Give interviews on a variety of television programs, emphasizing his desire to restore Germany's greatness. His popularity soars, and he meets a number of people, including party officials. Hitler and Fabian pay a visit to the NPD headquarters in Berlin one day. He summons Alfburn, NPD's federal chairman, and asks him how far his cause has progressed. Hitler dismisses him, claiming that they have wasted enough time, and the movement remains stunned for decades as a result of their statements. When the cops and the district attorney arrive at the TV studio, Christoph is ecstatic. They explain that they have come to file a charge of violating hate laws. Bellini then inquires as to what they are to do next. Christoph quickly mentions that the Fuhrer concert might have to be cancelled. The DA claims that they can continue to broadcast. Bellini breathes a sigh of relief, while Christoph puts up a brave face. After the DA departs, Cromier presents Christoph with a document confirming the payment of the dog that Hitler had shot earlier in his journey. Christoph is overjoyed when he receives the letter. Following that, Hitler is subjected to a television interview in which he is asked direct questions regarding his various roles in the war. Hitler says that he want to communicate with people, but the interviewer reminds him that none of his actions can be justified. He plays the video of him shooting the dog for him. The crowd is disturbed by the footage. Hitler gets enraged and threatens to do the same thing to him. He also claims that he will turn their studio into a tank parking lot. Christoph feels elated when he sees people's unfavorable reactions. 
Bellini is sacked after the horrible interview, and Christoph is named the new manager. After that, Hitler moves in with Fabian and begins living with him. He expresses amusement at Destiny's route and begins work on his second novel. The book will be available soon. Three months later, in the TV studio, everyone is seated in a meeting where the company's significant loss is discussed. Witzigman's performance, Christoph believes, would get them back on track, but one of his employees notifies him that he has resigned. Christoph becomes agitated and enraged at the selected staff for causing the show to be cancelled. One of the staff members recommends reuniting with Hitler, which Christoph finds intriguing. He seeks out Hitler once more, and offers Fabian a million dollars to invest in the film that Fabian and Hitler are producing in exchange for permission to show the film on their television. When Hitler and Fabian arrive to Cromier's home, Cromier's grandma recognizes Hitler. She alleges that Hitler gassed and killed all of the people. She refers to him as a criminal and orders him to go. In the car, Hitler expresses his surprise at Cromier's Jewishness. He begins to dismiss Jews, referring to them as less than human. Fabian is dissatisfied with Hitler's deeds and statements. Back on set, Fabian has Hitler retrace his steps to the location. He inquires as to what occurred before to the ball's arrival in the woods, but Hitler is unable to recall. He comes out of the set later that night, accompanied by assailants. They refer to him as the reason for returning Germany and give him a heavy slap across the face. As soon as Hitler opens his eyes, he is in a hospital in front of Bellini. Simultaneously, Fabian examines the material from the movie he shot on the boys in soccer. When he examines it attentively, he notices that Hitler has risen from his slumber. Fabian is taken aback by the events that preceded it. He rushes over to the area, where he discovers a sign indicating the historical location of the Fuhrer bunker. Fabian hurries to the hospital, but Hitler is nowhere to be found. Bellini declares that he is on his way to the set. Bellini does not believe Fabian when he discloses that he is the actual Adolf Hitler. Fabian gets agitated as he tries to convey his theory. The guards try to apprehend him, but he manages to escape. After then, Fabian arrives on set and fires a gun at Hitler. Hitler explains that he never claimed to be someone else when asked about his identity. Fabian claims that Hitler's propaganda is deceiving the public, to which Hitler responds that in 1933, the people elected a leader who publicly shared his entire vision. With his gun, Fabian leads Hitler to the top of a skyscraper. He catches Hitler off guard and brands him a monster. In response, Hitler claims that ordinary people elected an extraordinary leader and entrusted the country's fate to him. People choose him, he continues, because they share the same principles in their souls. Hitler is shot by an infuriated Fabian, who falls down the building and onto the street. Fabian soon hears Hitler's voice, who declares that no German will be able to defeat him. And Hitler, who had just been deposed, reappears behind it. Bellina then requests a cut in the studio, and everyone applauds the shoot. It turned out that it was only a film shoot, and Fabian was played by a random actor. After that, Hitler invites everyone to remember their friends who were unable to join them. Cronier is sobbing somewhere else, observing Fabian through a hole in the mental institution. After the film's success, Hitler and Bellina are busy signing autographs and giving interviews to fans. The folks on the street seem fond of Hitler and welcome him with respect as they pass by an automobile. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.